Hello and welcome to today's historic best of three deck tech gameplay video on Jund Revel and Riches. Revel and Riches, the namesake card basically of the deck, is an enchantment from Ixalan that says whenever an opponent, uh, a creature an opponent controls dies, you make a treasure, and most importantly, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more tre treasures, you win the game. This, when all of the, uh, what's the word? All these Streets of New Capenna cards, kind of like Bootleg or Stash, were revealed. I, My mind lit up with the idea of making Revel and Riches work in the Shard or Wedge, or whichever one it is, I don't remember, that uh, cares about treasures. And that is basically what this deck is trying to do. Through various means of generating treasure, we are trying to get the Revel and Riches to activate cards, kind of like a Goldspan Dragon, Bootleg or Stash, even Atsushi, uh, the Blazing Sky, can also generate some treasures. But outside of that and a couple of other cards, we're just kind of generally trying to play what is the uh, akin to a Jund Control, or sort of mid rangey deck that has a little combo, hey, it happens every once in a while finisher. That is the basic deck, really. Everything else is just the control tools aforementioned. Land base, relatively simple running some of the Triomes and just various shock lands and a couple of nice little utility lands utility lands air quotes but sideboard filled with relatively standard silver bullet cards Rampaging Ferocidon against Life Gain, Clothus against some graveyards Vraska's as also sort of a way to deal with some graveyards by way of just exiling the target annoying thing more or less and a little bit of life gain can't be hurt a rasta of the endless webs is or of the endless web is my sideboard answer to basically blue red phoenix or blue red aggro whatever you want to call it crux of fate a sweeper that can sometimes leave some of our board alive in the gold span and the asushi chandra as a uncounterable little uh threat against uh control decks if your opponent is running, uh, also running some Planeswalkers, usually also in some more controlling decks, Immortal Sun is nice. Cinder Vines is also there as both uh, artifact and enchantment hate and just some general hate on non-creature spells. And that is the basics of the deck. Before we go into game number one, remember to like the video if you liked it and sub if you like my content. Thank you all and we'll go now to game number one. Game number one with our Jun Revel and Riches deck. Uh, two landers. We have an innkeeper. We have the Revel and Riches. Bootlegger Stash is a. Not, I admit, before anybody comments about this, uh, <laughs> let me beat you to the punch. I acknowledge Bootlegger Stash is not a very good card. I do. I would, however, argue that it's kind of on theme for the Revel and Riches win con that we kind of need to make happen. And to be fair, if you have a Revel and you manage to uh, also get a bootlegger stash on the board, there's a good chance you win within a turn, maybe two. While we wait for our opponent to decide what they're going to do. Dent from our opponent. Sorry? What? Pardon Woo! Bloodlust Insider. So maybe some mono red aggro? Fair enough. We'll go ahead and keep her on too. Pretty much regardless of circumstance. So red white aggro? Red uh, Boros aggro, I assume. Okay. These two, I mean, okay, I guess it's not like an awful bit, I guess. See what our opponent does. They can, if they play a land drop, just buff their board. Which they might do. To be honest, if they do, we might just abrade their Bloodlust Insider as a way to just sort of stem the bleeding a little bit. If they attack, we eat the two damage all day long. And Keeper alone will help to mitigate some of the more aggressive decks that we do manage to find, as well as just generating treasure for our general gameplay. 
if our opponent, you know, decides to <laughs> play the game. But it's cool. I understand. We've all had, you know, a knock at the door or a sudden bio break, to put it politely. I totally understand. You know, cats knock something off the table. I get it. I do. There we go, opponent. That's all. Assassin's Trophy's not fantastic, but it is a way to get rid of that Paladin class if you really start fearing it. Hmm. Yeah, we'll use the Abrade first. This is the more conditional of the two removal spells, where the Murderous Rider's Swift End just basically flat out kills the thing. See what our opponent does. Show down with the skulls. Alright, you're drawing. Got some lands. Brutal Cathar. I mean, we're not hitting any land drops, which isn't great. We did keep a two lander, so if nothing else, learn from my mistake and don't be cocky. Probably plays the Brutal Cathar. But to be honest, like, it's not that bad. I'd love to draw a land. Okay, we're killing the trophy now. <laughs> also, I don't know what their deck is. Um, let's see. If we tap that in, we still can't do anything with it, right? So yeah, we're going to have to Assassin's Trophy away the Brute Bar. I guess we could have... We could have shocked that in, to be fair. And use the scavenging ooze to eat the Cathar out of their graveyard. That is a point I had forgotten about. I don't know if it's going to super matter. Because then you're taking two damage. I guess you'd gain two. Okay, no, that that's fair. That, that was a misplay for me. Cast a spell. What one of the creatures? Well, I feel less bad now. Uh, this isn't fantastic. Yeah, it's not gonna work what you think. Um, just go ahead and eat the damage. And eat the damage, little if. Do the same thing, except this time we learn from our mistakes. I'm aware this doesn't give us mana open to deal with the Paladin class, and I'm not super enthused about that. But I don't really think we're in a position to do anything else. The Paladin class, while annoying, will just kind of have to be dealt with. Let's see, whenever you attack, until end of turn, target attacking creature gets 1-1 one, one for each other attacking creature. Okay, so you have to have other creatures on the board for Paladin. Okay, that's not that bad. And it has to be for each other attacking creature. Okay, that's fine. Alright. Let's see what our opponent does. I'm sorry. What is that? Goma Fade Vanguard. When it attacks, target creature and opponent controls with power of less than or equal to the numbers of the number of warriors and equipment you control can't block. It's the printing card. Is the attacks. Is it warriors? Okay, so is it Boros Warriors, I guess. Alright, that's a little weird. Oh, the double strike part. I kind of fucking do. I forgot about that. It's not fantastic. Um. Okay, we're getting to the point where we're probably gonna need to just throw away our innkeeper now, because we're pretty reliably in the trying not to die phase. Yeah, I don't like that. If we had another black source, we'd be kind of cooking. Let's see what our opponent attacks with. Okay, so they must have updated that card. There's a den. Oh, fuck. That's going to be really, really bad. Um, It's not great. That paladin class is really going to fuck me up. But now I, I have a better idea what the hell 
hell is going on? Right, it can't even block, so I can't chump with it. Uh, this is really bad. Um, yeah, we just lose, don't we? Okay, that's... Let it, again, let it be known that you should really probably not... Uh, what's the word? Keep risky land openers. Although, to be fair, if we would have drawn a black source, maybe, like a, another overgrown tomb, we might have been good. I also now know what I'm going up against, which tends to help a lot. Uh, did we ever play a Rebel One Riches? Not really. They don't know about it. But Bootlegger Stash is going to be too slow. Go down maybe one Rebel and Riches. Thought Seize is bad against an aggressive deck. We don't want to Thought Seize ourselves to death. Uh, I guess maybe. Sweeper and Crux of Fate. A couple of Varaskas as removal and a little bit of life gain here and there. Uh, maybe a Clothus? Um, uh, Ernest Rider's a little weird, but I think we kind of. Well. Maybe we go down to two Rebels and bring in another Clothus. A, in theory, indestructible body that can also gain us some life. That's the rough plan. I will... Another thing I'll admit, for the sake of transparency. You, in my two weeks of testing with this deck, maybe one in... Eh, one in every nine or ten games you'll get a win with the Revel and Riches. It's very fun to build towards, and when you get it, you feel like a golden god. But you will have to jump through a lot of hoops to get it. We do have a Revel and Riches. Which is not bad. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and Proving Grounds tapped. See what our opponent does. And we have some control tools. We have a Rebel. We're not going to be cute and try and wait to start controlling the board until after we play the Rebel. Because then we'll just die. <laughs> I'm not that committed to the bit of Rebel and Riches. Alright, Paladin class is basically not a creature. I... Ah, uh, I guess we can play Swamp, because, yeah, it is a Triumph, so we can keep... Okay, I... that was stupid. I should have just played, uh, the Stomping Ground. I had totally forgotten about the Paladin class. Little, uh, Thalia tax like ability. Not great. Has to be said. Alright. Two lands. Seasoned Hollow Blade. Is an option. Uh, discard card. It's, it's not. Uh, it's not great. Uh, I guess. Okay, so I think we just have to abrade this now. All day long, he discards a card to make it indestructible. But our goal is just to have to make him run out of cards. Next turn, we can Vraska's contempt it. Which, key, uh, which is good to note for newer players. If you exile something, exiling doesn't care for creatures indestructible. Well, shit. That's really bad. Um, now, I do have a warrior list floating around that we might make in many moons from now that we use this card. I don't like this. I don't like having to do it like this, but we don't really have an option. We have to get rid of the war leader. No. Go ahead and pay the one. Get rid of what, three damage, four damage on the board? Get rid of four damage, we take two damage. So it only gets rid of like two. This isn't great, let's be honest here. Man, that's. Not great. That's why Murderous Rider is a little weird. But one of the reasons why I picked it is just because, let's be honest, we have to kind of generate a lot of value, and Murderous Rider can do that in removing something and being a sticky feature on the board. That's more or less the um, thought process behind my decision making. We just have to Vraska Contempt the Hallow Blade on our main phase, just not really an option. 
Now there's, I don't think there's anything that saves them. Yeah, go, please, please don't know how the interaction works in discard a card. Please don't know. Do you know? Because it's exile. It's not that unheard of, even standard. Carmel, what are you doing behind the... No, what are you doing? Come here. Brown sugar goofball. Get the... Get out of there. Doesn't work like that. Oh, thank God. And every once in a while, you can catch somebody up, which is important. Get out from behind there, you absolute goober. What are you doing? Another war leader. It's not great. It's really not. Okay. What do we do here? Do I take a turn off? Do I take the turn off and take four damage to get a Revel and Riches? Okay, yeah. My hope is that maybe we can get some extra value out of a Crux of Fate. Maybe they go in a little harder, assuming that we're, like, tapped out. That is the initial hope. Okay, we're down to five. That's not actually that bad, if I had to be honest. Okay, we'll do Crux of Fate, destroying all non-dragons. Does get us three treasures, which is nice. We're actually probably going to use all three of them now. We just need a body on the board right now. And the the win con that sometimes happens <laughs> with a rebel is not as important as just not dying right now. Cat. I love you, but I tried to let you, you know, leave of your own accord, and you were not having it. Um, we'll go ahead and Vraska's it right now, but we can afford to pay the ward cost. I do enjoy that ask just to make sure. Hopefully this is us turning a corner. Now, admittedly, as we talked about how exiling doesn't destroy a creature, that also sort of rubs up against the Rebel and Ridges, to be fair. Fuck's sake. Um... I guess we could do another Revel and Riches here, right? And then I can Assassin's Trophy at the next turn. It's a Hollow Blade. That's not the worst. So then we do Trophy on the Cathar. There's very little besides maybe a Mana Tie. There's some one mana... Uh protection spell, which admittedly does exist. Okay, so we get the rider back, which is good. They do, sadly, get a land out of it, but it's better to do that and not die. Again, we're not really in the thought process of making uh, what's the word? Uh, making the Revel and Riches trigger. Just trying not to die. Gonna go ahead and get the Croxa. Maybe get them to get rid of something good. Also, if you, they have less than their hand to discard, we need to see the power play if it dies quicker. Let's see the discard. The discard. Discard to get far. Which is honestly actually really pretty goddamn useful. We can also next turn actually escape the Croxa. Assuming nothing happens. We take the trade all day long. We just look at the game life. I'm sorry, he lets it die? I mean... Alright. It's a little weird, but not unheard of. Just looking to get rid of some high-value things in their graveyard, and I think the Brutal Cathars, if they could somehow get that back, would be the worst. So that's our plan. Yes! Turn the corner. We're going to play Croxa next turn, and at that point, we almost assuredly win the game. Uh, I think our original side of button plan was kind of good, so I think we're just going to go ahead and keep it. Does, uh, that, but that uh, particular game, too, that match, was... Uh, 
really good in showing that while yes you do have this meme ass win condition in your deck you can just win by playing an okay little jund control game plan here uh go ahead and stop and grab your tapped we don't like having to shock ourselves in too much but we're don't really have a whole lot of choice right now okay not really doing anything with our turns Uh, next turn we can always add sushi. Uh, we'll go ahead and not block, hoping hoping that the prosperous innkeeper can get us more life over the long term. Hmm. Uh, maybe actually. Maybe we'll do the Prosperous Innkeeper now that we drew it. And then we can get a Clothis. I don't know if this is going to trigger this when it comes into play. I didn't think so, because it doesn't enter. And that's fine. And next turn we can do the Atsushi and gain 2 life. I acknowledge that this isn't the best long term play. Go ahead and just eat the damage. It's not great, but I think we have to do it. Got the shock in our blazing sky here. Gain two life. Don't attack, since if we need to, we're not really. We might actually, depending on what he plays this turn, we might need to uh, jump block the innkeepers. This is not fantastic, to be entirely honest. Another showdown of the Skulls. Okay, so you can't play both things. I'll happily trade the dragon. I don't care that much about it. Okay, Paladin class is a thing. If you attack with the War Leader, I take that trade all day. Yeah, 100%. It's like not even close. I think we're just going to take the treasure tokens right now. Since we have a relatively sound game plan, that's a very good draw, by the way. Go ahead and start picking apart their graveyard with our Clothus. Play a land. Play gold span. And once we gain a life off of this, and with the gold span in play, all of our treasures can basically be cracked for two mana instead of one. Also allowing us to hold up a Vraska's Contempt and sort of pressure our opponent a little bit. They probably play a Brutal Cathar this turn. But pretty much whatever they Cathar down, I Vraska in response, right? Uh, except their creature. So it has to be a creature, so they can't get the Clothus yet. So if you get rid of, if you try to get rid of the gold span, as that is the only thing that makes sense to get rid of. Okay. So you will frask it in response, and the gold span should never leave the battlefield, I believe, if I understand the rules interaction correctly. Because kind of what was expected. That's fine. Go ahead and make your Bloodlust Insider a real thick boy. I stick to my original plan here. Sacrifice some treasures. I'm sorry. Oh, the Paladin class made me have to. Right, got it. Oh, another one. Okay, that's an option. Uh, in that case, we... Oh, fuck, I hate that we have to jump with that, but we do. Well, when they have a second one, sometimes they just have the thing. Probably need to hold the life that one can reasonably expect to get up of that. Well, that's not helping.
Um, if they attack with the Cathar this turn, I can trade into it with the Ooze, and they know that. I have three creatures in the deck, so we can only hope that maybe they goof here. Which is not great that we have to, like, hope for a goof. Ah, uh, they can just pump their board and actually make that pretty goddamn big. Which isn't fantastic. Ooh. See what they do. Do they play something? Do they buff the paladin class? Yeah, that'll do it. Death three. So then if we they attack the that's yeah, not fantastic. But if they don't attack with the Cathar, I think we just leave it alone for a minute. I don't love it. But if he doesn't cast any spell, his Cathar is going to flip, and I'm going to get the gold span back, I believe. Yeah, as you do. Might as well start getting rid of shit here. Don't like having to cannibalize our own graveyard, but in a moment like this, we don't really have the option. Just trying to stem the bleeding where we can. Uh, we're gonna actually, weirdly, we're gonna not cast anything on our turn, which should send it to night, correct? Uh, as it becomes day, if a player casts no spells during the turn, it becomes night. So it should become night. We don't do anything. Oh, it keeps the card. Well, that's good enough. Huh. This is bad. Until... Oh, until this creature... Okay, so I guess it doesn't leave. So transforming isn't like exiling and returning. Okay, okay. That's me not understanding the rules interaction. Well played. There's like nothing I do to really save us here. Uh, not that I can think of, anyway. But that's, yeah, that's more of me flubbing the understanding of the rules interaction. Of how transforming happens. The card just flips, it doesn't like exile and go away, or anything like that. Is there any way that I, I can, I don't immediately die. Okay, so we can play to our outs, we can be a responsible player and actually do that. Probably not gonna matter a whole lot, to be fair. We take what? 11, 12. So you have. It's not great. <laughs> to be honest, like, we were probably screwed anyway. That's better. I don't know if that saves us in any meaningful way. But it does feel good. Go ahead and get the Moon Rage Brutes. Oh, I have to pay three life. I forgot. Nobody ever... <laughs> I'm not used to letting that card resolve. Um, yeah. I think that just totally ends it for us, right? Fair enough. Well played by our opponent. They played and won fair and square. I'll just let them get their win. But I don't feel bad about this particular game. I don't think I made any glaring fuck-ups, other than, like, misunderstanding... not properly understanding how Transform works. Because I don't think I... Because <laughs> Brutal Cathar almost never turns into the Brute. I don't think I've... As far as I can remember, I actually cannot remember the last time I've seen the Brute in play. It's always the Cathar being flickered a load of times to do goofy shit. It was never the actual Moon Rage of Brute. To be fair, it's pretty good. We'll go now into game number two. In game number two, with our little Judd and Revel and Richard's deck. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep it. Something to do one, two. We got our Revel and Riches in our hand. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. Stomping Ground untapped. It's clearly going to be some... Soul Sisteries goofy shit deck. More than likely. Okay. A little bit different than I expected that to be. 
go ahead. Shotgun is scavenging news right now. Rampaging for Rasadon will likely be coming in the side out of the sideboard. Mentor of the Meek. Okay, maybe maybe it's not. Maybe Soul Warden is just a one drop. Which is fair. Uh, we'll go ahead and play a mountain and just play a gift of paradise. Let's go ahead and not attack. I believe we were going to be playing the role of the controlling deck. As far as I can tell. Fairy Vandal. Okay, so I some sort of blue white aggro kind of thing. Which is totally fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and revel in riches now. We might as well. Weird that they don't attack, but I guess they're not that concerned with flipping the Legion's landing. Next turn, we have some real options here. That's fucking annoying. Get the fuck out of here. They don't target that. Yeah, go ahead. Knock it out. It's not fantastic. We don't think they have the greatest game against this. I'll go ahead and give to Paradise the other mountain. Let's see. Then we can Murderous Rider down their Deputy of Detention. I should have told it what to tap, because it fucked me on the tap. Thank you, game. You really... Ooh, that annoys me. Okay, that's not awful. It's not what I wanted. It really kind of screwed me for a second there. And arguably still did screw me. But I guess it's my fault for not manually tapping, even though... They have the feature. Um, let's see what our opponent does now. Four lands, four creatures. The Frostlings? I'm sorry, the fuck? I mean, what the fuck? Turn, turn. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, we'll go ahead, just leave it. Gotta be honest, was not expected. Go ahead and murderous rider. Probably need to binding down the fairy vandal. Okay, uh, might as well go ahead and get rid of the vandal from their graveyard. Every bit of life we can get right now is honestly super important. If I had to be totally frank, that rant. Why is there a field of ruin in that? Okay, whatever. So, one of our uh, buff little basics is not long for this world. Uh, go ahead and Overgrown Tomb. We want to keep the Proving Ground so we can uh, cycle it now, since it's, we more or less can cast all the stuff on our deck. Well, that's not fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and attack. It's not fantastic. I don't know what their deck is, so we're more or less in the just, like, trying to figure-ish out stage. It's not fantastic. That might have been the wrong play, but I gotta be honest, when I saw Soul Ward, my eyes glazed over and I more or less zoned out. So I've been, like, half aware during this whole game. I don't know what they're trying to do. Because the deck is, like, not making a whole lot of sense. There's, I guess, like, blue-white weenie, but there's a panharmonicon, and there's Field of Ruins in their deck. It's very weird. It doesn't appear... I mean... Okay, that's not true. There appears to be some consistency in this thing, our internal logic. That's about it. The deer Kraken... So some be yeah, a blue-white aggro that combines some mentor, the meek stuff, and some draw synergies. Okay, that's the thing you can do. Um, okay. I don't think we attack. I don't like having to. 
yeah, we'll go ahead and cast a lock win, I guess. We kind of have to, to find something. Uh, honestly, the Assassin's Trophy is good for the Kraken. I think it's going to generate more bodies than we can reliably handle. Yeah, the Panharmonicon arguably needs to go, but we do have the Seiju hiding away somewhere in here. Uh, once again, I'm kind of getting screwed on the auto tapper. Just neat up. <laughs> Pardon me. Let's see what our opponent does. They have a glass pool, sure, which is a thing. So then they have a Fasa, so they have. Four. Okay. Their deck's a pile of cards I, I, anymore. It has long since gotten out of the realm of things I can realistically plan. So we're gonna get rid of, bring in some Rampaging Ferocidon and some, uh, what's the word, uh, Crux of Fate? Probably the Frost Link. Frost links a little, little, little. As you do appear to have a brain in your skull. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um. Okay, so some real padded playroom shit. This will be fun. So we gotta try and rush through this game real quick. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anybody. That's fine. <laughs> I lied. My, my eyes immediately glaze over. And I almost immediately stop caring about what the hell's going on. Crux of Fate. Rampaging Ferocidon. They know we have the Revel and Riches. Bootlegger Stash is good to keep in against Control and other mid rangey decks that are just not really going to threaten you directly like an aggro deck will. Probably give it a one Thought Seize. And just go ahead and run it. Yeah, we're not that committed to sitting here and bashing our head against a wall, and I am making a video, and this is already just going to run longer due to the nature of the deck. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and play first. One lander, obvious throwaway. Several landers. A little bit better. Uh, I guess, um... Let me just get rid of the basic mountain. Whenever the game decides to allow us to, but that's fine. Waiting on our opponent. Wait to see what our opponent is gonna do. This is not a great opener, all things considered. Uh, it's more that it's just like not awful. Which admittedly is not a great place to be in, but sometimes you just don't have the luxury of choice. So you gotta kinda make do with what you got. Tipple from our opponent on turn one. And we'll go ahead and shock our overgrown tomb and play the end. See what our opponent does. Turn two. Planes and then a dude. I'm sorry, backup agents. I mean, okay. That is a card. Uh, we'll go ahead and Stomping Grounds tap to play Croxa. Just sort of attack their hand a little bit. So their deck is some blue white weenies and some draw two synergy and some flicker synergy. I mean, it's like fine, and it's cohesive enough. It's just, just a pile of cards in that, like, at this point I can no longer guess to know. Uh, go ahead and get that dip. It's combat damage. Or, sorry, when this card or a quick creature does combat damage to player. If it's not a token, conjure a duplicate up it into your hand. Is it the creature that it's attached to, or is it the scanner itself? It's not the most clear. Weirdly, that's an artifact. 
So I'm actually just gonna head that problem off altogether. That's fine, take a land, I don't care. We're just in the trying not to die phase. This particular point in time. Uh, I guess go ahead and attack. Five lands from our opponent. The rumor giver. Alright, I mean, do you, I guess. Uh, go ahead and Blood Crypt tapped. We're gonna probably keep the innkeeper to block as I see them. Uh, flooding the board a little bit with their rumor gatherer on the field, as you should, honestly. Cloudkin Seer. First time it scries, then the Cloudkin draws. Probably plays another creature. Sky Cave. Look the Sky Clave will do it. Uh, honestly, yeah, getting. You're getting four out of this is pretty good. Go ahead and enter tap the stopping ground. Crux of Fate is destroying all non-dragons. I don't get the actual uh, innkeeper back, but I'll take a little 2-2 guy. We're very far from escaping the Kroxa to attack their resources in hand, which is an unfortunate reality. I keep on drawing lands. <laughs> My god. Um, I guess we just don't attack. This is not fantastic. It has to be said. Okay, I mean, Reliquary Tower does make a little bit of sense in your deck. And it is uncommon, so it's worthless free. Okay, to be fair, that's not that bad. We'll go ahead and attack now that we have the rider up. Give us the ability to answer some big scary thing they might make. Ethereal Escort. Three mana, three feet lifelink. It is the battle for their attacks. Card in your hand. Perpetually gains lifelink. No. That, that can't be... A mythic. That's actually garbage. It's also probably one of the reasons why people really don't like alchemy is because it's just god awful value. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. Just so we can help develop our own board and game plan. But that card is so not worth the mythic. It's like really, really bad. But yeah, as I was talking about before, I cut myself off basically. One of the reasons that, I mean, I don't really ever touch alchemy is because it's so, uh, what's the word? Such bad value. There's so many rares and mythics that you have to spend a ludicrous amount of money and or wild cards to get one out of, you know, the dozen cards that might actually be kind of good. Clone Crafter. I actually beat this card last game. And it's the battlefield conflict. You can a random card from an opponent's library into your hand, and you can just cast it. And they got an ooze, which is fucking brutal. But you can't activate the effect, thank god. It's a copy of the card, right? It's not the... Yeah, duplicate a random creature, yeah. What the... Okay, okay, there's... That has to be a sideboard card. That's the only way that's in that deck. Yeah, go and attack cool. That's cool. Um, honestly, we kind of need to get rid of the binding. I don't know how um, the binding works with the Adventure Swift End part of it, but because I don't know, I'd rather not flub up to a misunderstanding of rules and interactions again, if I can avoid it. That's a Kraken. I'll do it. Uh, and then a Glass Pool Mimic onto the other Kraken. Really, really not good. No point in attacking now, which is a thing. 
Uh, go ahead and get one of our tap lands. Again, we're keeping the Proven Ground since late game it can be cycled. And we'll take any cards where we can get. Okay, so it's not a land, right? Because when it is in the backside, gotcha. So we can besage you, probably besage you away there, Castle Ardenvale. It's not fantastic, again, we're just trying to fill our bin with stuff with your Croxa, so maybe we can contest the board a little bit. But unless we draw a Crux of Fate, this is very quickly going to get away from us with their double Nadir Kraken. I believe that you have to spend mana to do this, but it's so late in the game that it's... Dear God. I mean, get on here. Give me your opponent. That's honestly really, really good. And he's more or less going to win you this game. We will just take whatever we can get. We're just trying to hemorrhage the bleeding now. God, a Crux of Fate would be fantastic right about now. And Wolf Span is not it, man. I mean, it's a thing that can block, which is better than nothing, but that's not really a high mark now, is it? Uh, yeah, if they just attack with the four fives, they don't really need to worry about anything else. It's a deck and stone. I think that's us dead now, right? I don't think there's anything we do. Well played from our opponent. I mean, they're... Neato, Thoughtseize. Uh, yeah, the deck is it's pretty fun. But boy, I will be honest and say this deck will probably not stay in the rotation. But it's one of those Revel and Riches, much like Simic Ascendancy, are some of the alternate win cons that I would like to. Pardon the plan overhead would like to uh, eventually get around to try and take a crack at. It's a pretty fun list, but honestly, if you don't have Revel and Riches, don't craft it. <laughs> you could probably just do better with a Jund control list without it. Thank you all for watching. Remember to like the video if you liked it, sub if you like my content and would like to see more, and if you have any sort of constructive, relatively nice questions, then I'll probably respond to them in the comments down below. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together.